Hi, this is Reverend Valerie Love. I've been waiting for you, boo. <laughs> Let's chat, shall we? So today I want to chat a little bit about you commanding angels. You command angels. And the inspiration for this, I'll, I'll share with you where the inspiration for this message came from. It came from this morning. I was reading in my book, Soulgasm. This is Soulgasm, one of my favorite books that I've written. <laughs> if there can be children that you have favorites of, I don't believe you can. But this is one of my favorite books that I've written, Soulgasm. You can get her online, Amazon. Anyway, Soulgasm is a daily readings. So if you look inside Soulgasm, you see that it has a message for every day. So today I was reading the message for today. It's message 123, and it is for May 22nd. So as I was finishing up the message, at the bottom of the page in every Soulgasm passage, there is a scripture reference right there, a sacred text reference. So it could be A Course in Miracles, it could be in the Bible. So this particular one is telling the story about Jacob wrestling with an angel. So listen to the story. It says, this left Jacob all alone in the camp and a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. When the man saw that he would not win the match, he touched, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of its socket. Then the man said, let me go for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? The man asked. He replied, Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob, the man told him. From now on, you will be called Israel because you have fought with God and with man and have won. Take a breath. And as they say in church, and let the church say amen to the reading of the Lord. <laughs> so let's talk about what that means metaphysically. Because you're here on this planet, planet Earth, having a human experience, even though you're a spirit being. Now you're a spirit being who has been told by the divine, the divine within you, higher than the conscious human self. You've been told by the divine that you command angels. Now what has happened is you may have forgotten how to do it. You may have not realized that you even had that power or ability in the first place, or you may not know how to wield that power and ability. Well, there's a simple thing that I'm going to tell you right now on how to command angels. It begins with a simple three-letter word, ask. It's that simple, ask. I love for everything to be boiled down to its very essence, the most simple way that it can be, ask. So let's talk about this story. So in the story, you have Jacob. Jacob was all alone in the camp. After he was all alone in the camp, here comes a man. Now, many times in the first part of the Bible, we, we call it, people call it the Old Testament. When I was in Jehovah's Witnesses, they called it the Hebrew Scriptures. Because the first part of the Bible, what people call the Old Testament, that is written mostly, was written mostly in Hebrew and Aramaic. The second part of the Bible, which people call the New Testament, that was written mostly in Greek. So the witnesses called it the Hebrew Scriptures and the Greek Scriptures. Some people call it the Old Testament and the New Testament. So whatever you call it, the first part of the Bible, many times when there was an angel that appeared to people on the planet, the angel would be called man, a man of the Lord. And many people think that this man reference actually means or connotes Christ, the coming of Christ, that Christ was the one coming to all these different people, to the saints and sages of old, to the magical workers of old who actually saw, like Abraham, who actually saw angels and entertained angels. Many, many, many People in the Bible saw angels, had conversations with angels, talked to angels. It was very common. It wasn't even like something that is out of the ordinary. I would say that if you don't have angel communication, that's out of the ordinary. There's something wrong with that picture. Having angel communication is so natural. It's just a part of you. 
Now, Jacob is alone. Here comes a man. The man and Jacob begin to wrestle. What does that mean metaphysically? Metaphysically, there is something that Jacob is wrestling with, some issue he's wrestling with, right? Well, now they wrestle and they wrestle all night and the dawn is beginning to break. The sun is coming up. The, the man, who is an angel, says to Jacob, you got to let me go. I have to come out of this fight because there's a station I have to return to. Look, the dawn is breaking. I can't be out here <laughs> with you and it, the dawn is breaking. I have some place I have to be at dawn. Back at his heavenly station, his post, doing what he's supposed to be doing at the breaking of dawn, praising God or whatever that particular angel's job is to do at dawn break, at the break of dawn. And he's like, uh-oh, I've been here fighting with you all night. Now the dawn is breaking. You have to let me go because I have to go take care of my responsibilities. Jacob, something very interesting happens in the story. Jacob says, no, I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you go until you first bless me. Now that is powerful, isn't it? Jacob, <laughs> human, except Jacob knew he wasn't no ordinary human. How did Jacob know he wasn't no ordinary human? Because he knew from within himself and from his lineage, from his grandfather, Abraham, and from his family lineage, he knew he was no ordinary human. He knew his birth was no ordinary birth. He knew that his lineage was no ordinary lineage. So he knew he wasn't an ordinary person. So he probably knew from his father and his grandfather that he could command angels because his grandfather entertained angels all the time. Abraham, you get the connection? So Abraham, you know, angels came up. Oh, yes, angel, let's get the food. Let's get the ram. Let's, you know, Abraham was accustomed to entertaining angels. Why? Because Abraham said something very key in the word. When we read the word with eyes of understanding and we ask to have the third eye open when we're reading something that is a sacred scripture. Third eye open. Please do not equate that with religion. I am not talking about religion here. I really don't care what religion you are. This will work for you, whatever religion you are. I don't even subscribe to religion. Religion is a construct of human creation, okay? I am talking about reading sacred texts with your third eye open. And when the third eye is open, you will see things that you've never seen before. You will see things that go beyond what a religious understanding could even teach you because this is direct revelation from the divine within your own consciousness. In the story, Jacob, says, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Hmm. Now he knew he could hold an angel in place, but guess what? He held the angel in place after the angel had touched his hip socket. The angel had touched his hip socket and wrenched it out of place because him and Jacob were fighting and the angel saw he wasn't going to win. And the angel knew he had some place to be at dawn. The dawn is breaking. I have to go. And he knew that this man, this human being, was not letting him go. He had to do something. Even with his leg out of socket. And they say in that sacred text that Jacob walked for the rest of his life with a limp from that fight. He said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Can you imagine your leg is out of socket? You've been fighting with a freaking angel all night long. And <laughs> you're, you're fighting, fighting, and fighting. And yet you're saying, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. The angel said, what's your name? He said, my name is Jacob. He said, well, no longer is your name Jacob. Now your name is Israel because you have fought with man, with God and man, and you have won. And then phew, the angel... Uh, Jacob was like, all right, I got my new name. I got my blessing, Israel. Hey, I am the man. All right, I'll let you go now. And the angel, phew, to his station. What is that? What's in that story for you? In that story for you is that you get to summon the angels, number one. 
you can summon them. And once you summon them, and of course you have to learn how to do that. Once you summon them, you then can ask them for a blessing. No, you bless me. And Jacob knew that this man had the power and the ability that had been conferred upon him by God, by the divine, to bless Jacob, to confer a blessing. And he said, nope, you're not leaving it until you bless me. So the angel now knowing that Jacob knows that he has the power to bless him, says, what's your name? And he says, Jacob. And he says, no more. Now your name will be Israel because you have fought with God and man and you have won, you have prevailed. And so the angel goes, Jacob has his blessing. So that's the second thing that number one, you summon angels, you can summon them, you can command them. Number two, you can command them to give you a blessing. Now, this is how I work with this principle, commanding angels to give you a blessing. I have turned over all of the details of my life to the angels because it's just too many details to try to figure out. I can't figure out all the stuff I'm supposed to do. You know, like if I have to travel or if I have to pick up a rental car or if, or if, our, if we're doing a retreat or people are coming to visit or our community is getting together or we're, people are coming with trains and buses and this and that. Who can think about all of that? I don't. I tell the angels, angels, the perfect trains, the perfect cars, the perfect buses, Y'all know what to do. I need to get to California. Make it so. I turn the whole thing over to them and I command them and darned if they don't do it every time. I mean, they will set it up so perfectly for me. It looks like I'll be gliding through the perfect airport at the perfect time and the perfect rental car and the perfect people picking me up and then you can just glide through your life like that. <laughs> Why do you think I'm so happy? <laughs> People are always like, are you ha like that all the time? All the freaking time. Most of the time, anyway. I mean, I have moments, but, you know, moments are human, human moments. However, most of the time, I feel pretty darn good. Why not? You have all this help. You are the divine in human form. You can command these angels. So that's the second thing. Just turn over all the details of your life to the angels. Let them do it. Number three. Once you have the angelic connection, once you have summoned them, once you have asked them for the blessing, number three is now you have to walk going forward with a knowing and awareness that this is who you are. Israel no longer was Jacob. Now he was Israel. There is a distinction between Jacob and Israel. Huge. Israel was the father of a whole millions of people. Jacob was not that person. So after the angelic encounter, he was actually a different person. Your name is your nature, which means that he had a new name. He actually had a new nature that had come over him in fighting with God and angels and winning. That's you. You command angels. I love you. Valerie Love. This is me online at ValerieLove.com. More on how to command angels, more on angelology in other videos, more on what sets of angels to work with. There are lots of sets of angels to work with. More on all of that um, coming up. Be blessed.